Tonight, the case against the Obama administration's Department of Justice and FBI is growing. A new report tonight that Obama's FBI sent a spy to London in an attempt to gather dirt on the Trump campaign. The New York Times reports that a woman tried to infiltrate the campaign by trying to befriend George Papadopoulos. Now, if the New York Times is right, then here's what we now know. The attorney general says spying did occur. Yes, I think spying did occur. Well, let me... But the uh, question is whether it was predicated, adequately predicated. And I'm not suggesting it wasn't adequately predicated, but I'd need to explore that. Indeed. We know that the FISA warrant was obtained by the FBI through the use of opposition research, bought and paid for by the Hillary campaign and never verified by the FBI general counsel at the time, James Baker. Can you imagine not verifying all of that material? He didn't care. He didn't do it. Meanwhile, Trump 2016 campaign advisor Michael Caputo tells us the FBI sent a spy to effectively entrap him. Watch this. I know that I myself was approached by a Russian national FBI informant in late May of 2016. And what and did we that know Russian national contacts. FBI informant want? He wanted to give me some dirt on Hillary Clinton. I turned it down. I, 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 I How sent do you him know over he was Roger an FBI Stone, informant? Didn't know until I sat down with the Mueller investigation, and when they asked me about him, and I told them uh, what I knew, their, th th by their faces, I knew that it was someone that had, had been sent to me. Hmm. And now you add in this whole new layer, this new layer that the New York Times says it can confirm. An FBI informant, Obama's FBI department, was sent to London to spy on the campaign. And what we're left with tonight is... A very, very troubling picture of an Obama administration that may have weaponized its intelli intelligence divisions all in an effort to spy on innocent Americans and a man who was about to become the next president of the United States. Unacceptable. Joining me right now to react to all of it, we have Strategic Communications Director for the Trump 2020 campaign, Mark Lauder. Mark, I mean, this is, uh, it's very troubling. And, and, and I think that Attorney General Barr points out, you know, look, we need, we need to get to the bottom of it, right? Because we need to understand what the motives were and whether they were pure or whether they were just political. Because my goodness, sir, if they were political, then I think some heads will need to roll. There, there needs to be accountability. You're absolutely right. And, and this is clear. The Trump campaign was spied on by the FBI, and it was directed at the highest levels of the Department of Justice. To what end? They were spying on political opponents. And it's something we cannot allow. We do not weaponize our police powers of the United States government to turn it on political disagreements or political opponents. We saw the FBI do this back in the 1960s and before with J. Edgar Hoover. They kept lists of un-American people, and Congress put a stop to it. Right now, you have Congress, at least the Democrats, cheerleading it and trying to cover for it. And that's why they're running scared right now, because they know this entire scheme and the Obama administration's misadministration of justice is about to be exposed. And that's why you have the likes of Kamala Harris and some others now calling for the resignation of Attorney General Barr? Is it because they want him to resign before the tables turn and America learns what really went down in 2016? You're absolutely right. You see Adam Schiff saying it, too, and it's actually a joke. I mean, it's comical that somebody like Adam Schiff, who lied to the American people for two years about the president of the United States being a Russian agent or knowing of Russian in evidence about collusion, proven false, would have the temerity to say anyone was a liar. He's a liar, and he's trying to cover up and stall this investigation from exposing what they were doing behind the scenes to block President Trump. And what do you think was really going on? I mean, look, it, it, and it, it, with all due respect, sir, you have a political motive, too, because you're working on the 2020 campaign. But if you can just put that aside for a moment, I mean, I, I try and just think about this stuff as an American citizen who values my privacy and values my rights. And the idea that any of this could have gone down, I think, is just extraordinarily troubling. Um, and, and it's an issue that every American, regardless of what party they're in, should care about. Do we need... Do we need another special prosecutor to, to investigate what actually happened there? 
I'm not sure we need to go with another special counsel. You have the attorney general, you have the inspector general, and you also have the Senate Judiciary Committee promising to look into this. But here's the thing to your point, Trish. Congress has already done this before. When, when what J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI did back in the 60s and beyond was exposed, Congress in a bipartisan fashion came together to put a stop to it in the 70s. They worked together to protect the the freedoms and the rights of American citizens, and it looks like right now that all of that went out the window again under Obama in 2016. Wow. Look, I said we were broken uh, or becoming broken. It's quite clear that uh, if they can't protect us from that kind of deep state horrific uh, nonsense, then we really don't have uh, a Congress that's of any meaning at all.